we're going to do today is to take this film and I'm going to load it into a daylight developing tank. Now this is my daylight developing tank. It's an old Ilford model for 35 millimeters. The yellow handle is a part pro a part, oh, sort of work in progress to automate the handle turning because the idea of this is that the, the liquid only comes up so high and yet the film is up to there so you need to keep it turning all the time while it's being processed which as long as it's only about 10 minutes or so is no great hardship. This particular model is quite good because it has a built-in thermometer there so I can sort of make sure the temperature's reasonably accurate. Something I'll have to watch today because it's freezing outside and you load it from the top. Now I'm going to switch over to the other camera and we shall start the process. Right well I now have the three items I need to start the process which is a pair of scissors and the film but of importance is this device for getting the film out of the canister and the process for this is you, you place it up against the film like so and push up the outer piece which pushes a piece into the film is right second shot ah it seems to have pulled the film out without my having to go through the process so we'll save that for another time right so here we have the film out of the cassette now to use the daylight developing tank it's important that the film is trimmed at the edge with a square end and I'm going to put a bevel on the edge like so. Now we'll bring in the developing tank which I don't know how well this is cut yeah it looks okay and it works around from this side so I've got to take the lid off and when you look inside you can see the spiral and the guide for guiding the film in and the process is that you turn this I shall make sure that first of all this is reasonably tight yes it's all running smoothly I load the cassette in here like so by pulling out the back there And if you notice here, there is a slot which a blade comes up. Don't know if it can be seen there. And once the film is into the spiral of the developing tank, that allows us to cut it off. So that is basically the process. So what I what we do now, and obviously once it's in the tank. It, it's uh, there's not much else to see so first of all I'll lift the guide out so I can get the puller that pulls the film onto the tank spiral and the process is quite straightforward this clip clips onto the end of the film there to make sure it's nice and central oh dear it's decided to be awkward bring it down through the tank 
and take up the tension and make sure that's through there and bring off a lead gently. We then put the lid back on and it's locked in place at this side so it doesn't happen, doesn't come off and now all we do is gently turn it and load the film onto the spiral. Now considering the age of this machine, I'll be honest I have no idea but I suspect it's over 40 or 50 years old. If it came from, it came from the 50s or 60s it certainly it could be even nearer 70 years old. It, it's difficult to see here but there's a little marker there that indicates how far you've probably winded, wound on. It's running off the film. It's also an indication that the film is winding on. You just turn it gently until you get a point where there's a piece of pre it's pressure and you can't turn it anymore. You then go around to the back, turn this up, back around here, turn it gently and now the film is loaded and we're ready for the next stage which is processing. Right, I now have my developing tank loaded with film and I could actually do this on the kitchen table if I sort of got myself some bowls of water and the like but in fact what I've got to do is I've we've got a bathroom next door and I shall go in there with a bit of luck I shall see if I can uh, actually um, film the developing process. There's not a lot to see but I've got to prepare the chemicals so I shall and the the kit. I use a basic kit and I can demonstrate what you can do get away with in a basic bath room but as you observe so far I have not needed one piece of blackout material. This is preparing the developer using Pyro 510. Now for this I need two, milli two millilitres and you use a syringe which goes into this device here and then precise 200 millilitres as required. Right so that's the developer in the device. I now need to get the water in the developer around the correct temperature. I shall check it out and into this it needs some cold water add in as it's a bit too warm. 200 millilitres of developer are prepared as is about 200 millilitres of water. With this pyro you, it's best to use plain water as in lieu of a stop bath and the fixer is at the right temperature in the water bath. I will now set the clock, it's eight and a half minutes to go so I preset my clock to uh, eight and a half minutes. Right. Continually turning pouring in the developer. And starting the clock. It's quite a tedious process just keeping this turning. So the yellow wheel here, the idea is that it will be uh, one day I'll fix up the electric motor so it will work continuously. We're now on the last minute of the developing process. The usual procedure is to pour the developer into the container I pulled it out from because it's only a one-off, it will be disposed of. I'll then add the clean water to act as a sort of stock bath. Obviously it's not a genuine stock bath but because of the dye situation with this developer it's not recommended that you use a proper stock bath. 
it quite clearly says that here. Do not use stop bath. Use water instead. Plus all the others. So this is Mr. De Fier's 5110 Pyro. Enough here to make up 10 litres. So far it's proved to be quite used. Good. I'm quite pleased with it. Right, we're there now. I shall pour out the Pour in I'm now pouring in the fixer. and get in the first batch of water to do the washing with. Now, instead of having on running water where it's just cold and trying to keep the temperature, I'm basically using the quick replacement of a number of four volumes of water system. So I found this actually works out quite well in practice. All I need to do is get the temperature down here at a 20 as my stock of water is a bit high. Obviously a degree or two is not going to make, make that much difference. So I've here got my uh, first dollop of wash water and I'll give the fix for about two minutes. Continual turning seems to work quite well. It's about two and a quarter. Right, so now turn the fixer. Fill it with water. Once you've done a couple of washes, it's quite safe for you. It's always safe to take it out of because it's no longer affected by the light. So I take the top off this and take out the film guide and the cartridge and put them to one side as it's much easier just to pour the water into the whole film. And uh, I can now make sure I've got my thermometer and can prepare from my stock of water ready to ensure that I've got the right temperature. Right, we're now coming towards the end of the washing when I've just been replacing the, uh, the water. This is basically washing by complete replacement and obviously I keep the uh, continual agitation and replace it fairly frequently. I've tried this a few times and uh, well put it this way the negatives haven't gone off of me and by the time I've scanned them it doesn't really matter. Although the one I've done, I've done these in the past, I still have the negative, so. Right, <clears throat> last wash in, and <clears throat> we're now done. Now this will, <clears throat> and take the, uh, best way to take the side off here. I need to do this to get the, the uh, um, spiral out. There we have, and well, there's a slight brown tinge on them, and by the looks of it, an excellent set of photographs from a very cheap and basic camera. So, good old Kent Mir and good old Pyro 510 are delivered. So I know I'll take it out the spool. And by the judicious use 
all the stuff could be shallower in the house. Let's travel this thing out of the way. I hang up the uh, film and add the weight. And just gently go over with the squeegee. And there we have one process film.